So today we want to talk about the most accurate way to assess your blood sugars. Okay? So we'll talk about A1C, checking your blood glucose when you're fasting, and checking your blood glucose when you're post-meal. I'm not going to actually mention the glucose tolerance test where you're going to consume actual glucose and then measure your blood sugars simply because you're never going to consume just pure glucose in your diet. Okay? So that's not going to really give you an accurate assessment of what's going on. So let's start with A1C. Okay, A1C is not as accurate as blood glucose simply because it's not measuring your blood glucose levels directly. It's giving you a, a rough estimate of your blood sugars over three months. What it's really measuring is the percent of hemoglobin that is bound to glucose. Now, hemoglobin is the protein that carries oxygen in your blood. So A1C is the percentage of how much hemoglobin that's connected to that sugar okay, in your blood. Now, there's other similar measurements. You have A1B, A1A1, A1A2 that's not binding to glucose, but the A1C is. So this is what they use to assess that. Now, let's talk about anemia. There's a couple different types. Uh, one is uh, where you have low iron. If you have uh, the type of anemia that is low iron, you're going to have an abnormally high A1C giving you a false reading with your blood sugars. So it's not going to really be as accurate to actually indicate high blood sugar issues. Now there's another type of anemia called hemolytic where you're actually having destruction of the red blood cells, in which case you're going to have a very low A1C. You can also have an infection which can throw this off. You can also have a liver disease or a kidney disease or even being pregnant and it can throw off this number right here. So we want to just use this as a guideline. It's not a bad test but realize it's not 100%. All right, now let's just bring up the point, what is normal blood sugar? Well, it should be in the 80s, uh, roughly between 70 and 90 milligrams per deciliter. But if you are a diabetic, um, you're most likely not going to achieve this right here, at least initially, until you're working on it for many, many months, even sometimes years. Because if you're a diabetic, uh, especially you've been a diabetic for a long time, you have insulin resistance, and many times you've lost up to 50% of your beta cells. Those are the cells that actually make insulin. So we're really dealing with a dysfunctional pancreas, and it's going to be really hard to bring this down simply because you don't have all the cells that make insulin. And this is going to leave you with a slightly elevated blood glucose level. Okay. Now, if you really work on this and you do intermittent fasting over a period of time, I believe you can bring it down pretty close to a normal level. Okay. Here's one of the challenges that I see with diabetics. They're going to their doctor and the doctor is assessing them and they're, um, they might be improving, but they can't seem to get the blood sugar down without a lot of medication. Okay. Not to mention the recommendations that they're giving the person is usually higher carbohydrate, low fat, you know, um, type foods. So they're never going to be able to get them uh, even close to normal, especially if their carbohydrates in their diet are just too high. So that's one thing. But usually diabetics have a lot of complications. They have high blood pressure. They have eye problems. They have nerve problems. They have heart problems. They have cholesterol problems. And they have a fatty liver. So they're on a lot of different medications. And the real problem is the side effect from those medications are sometimes worse than the side effects from the high sugar, okay? Now, if you are a diabetic and you do the keto plan and you're doing intermittent fasting and you're doing great, but you can't seem to get this down to where it needs to be and it's, it's higher, just realize you can do certain things to neutralize and minimize the complications of that high sugar, okay? And you can do it with high nutrient dense foods, okay? That's why it's so important when you do a, a healthy keto plan to make sure those foods are high quality, uh, having enough vitamin A, vitamin C from food, uh, B1, uh, vitamin E, vital, okay? Those are all antioxidants that are really, really important, especially vitamin B1. If you have enough B1 and get it from nutritional yeast or a natural source, even if you have high sugar, the complications will be very minimal, okay? So that's what you want to do if you're diabetic. Kind of got diverted there a little bit.
Okay, so let's go to the next test, fasting blood glucose level. This is not a bad test. It'll give you some data. And of course, normal would be like 80, okay? Really roughly between 70 and 90. Uh, but when it gets above 110 milligrams per deciliter, that's when you start to have problems, okay? Start to have damage to the cells of the pancreas. They're called beta cells. It's at 110. When you start getting above 140, you start to have more problems with the other tissues, like the heart, especially the inside of your arteries, okay? You start getting inflammatory conditions. The kidney, the nerves, the fingertips, and the bottom of the feet, and the brain, okay? So, so if you get your test back and it's above 140, then we know what's happening with this, okay? But again, if you're a diabetic, okay, and you're on keto and you're doing really good, it might be really hard to even get it down here, at least initially, but that's okay. If you keep eating really healthily, you'll be protected. Now, the absolute best and most accurate way to assess your blood sugars is post-meal, okay? Uh, one to two hours. This gives you the dynamics of how your pancreas releases insulin to push those blood sugars down. Normal, after one to two hours, should be uh, 120 or less. And then eventually at two hours, it should be below 100, okay? So anything above that would be a problem. So this right here is rarely uh, talked about. It's, it's rarely assessed. Now, if you have a blood glucose meter, I would highly recommend focusing on this assessment right here as your method of knowing your blood sugars are in check. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.